one of the things you touched on earlier, and I think it leads naturally into this, what we're talking about here about the potential uses for AI. And one of the things we have to be careful of is the AI powered, if you will, weapons of war. You know, I, I'm a uh, former military. I was Air Force for about 11 years. So I could very easily see how that would be something the military would be interested in because now you're talking about improving our capability as war fighters. But I, I, I really think that the battlefield is one of those places that needs to remain some level of not on the cutting edge of technology, if you will. But w- what are your thoughts on that? How, how do you think that that's a route we might see ourselves go down? Well, well, it's not, there's no might about it. It's it's mm-hmm. happening. Um, but I think the important thing to realize is that the Terminator scenario <laughs> is not going to happen. There will be no Terminator. But where where you're seeing the biggest impact of AI in military um, is in drones. Mm-hmm. So uh, for the last 20, 25 years, without any artificial intelligence, you've had you know, drones like the little helicopter, the little, the little yeah. tr- tiny toy drones. You've had missiles um, that are all guided by an operator uh, sitting at headquarters with a joystick. Yep. So the operator sees via cameras, guides it, and tells the missile or the, the drone, uh, tells, the, uh, the, yeah, tells the missile or the drone when to, uh, when to fire or when to uh, crash in and and blow up something. Um, what AI gives us the ability to do is to remove that operator with the joystick and to say, okay, when you find the person, this terrorist, when you recognize this face, that's who you should you shoot. Or when you see um, uh, you know, something that looks like a, um, uh, you know, a, a caravan with missile launchers on the back, that's what you should bomb. Um, so it's a it's a it's a step towards scarier weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would argue that it's not at the level of nuclear weapons over conventional weapons. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. Yeah, I think philosophically there is, and this is where I think for me the the, the question really becomes. Uh, excuse me, the conversation really goes to is. It's the philosophy and the ethics of it. Is it, for America, it is safer for us to put a predator drone in a, uh, another land where there's hostile forces and everything and have our airmen, uh, sailor, marines, soldiers, everybody um, safer that way. However, there is an ethical question to it. One of the instances of war is that there is some level of risk on both sides. And by putting the predator drone in there, where all we're risking is money. And I do think that that is a question that will continue to be developed. And again, like we do with everything, there will, they'll become philosophers who uh, who talk about this, who eth- ethical people who talk about this and everything. And I think that's just a very interesting dynamic to talk about is at what stage does our war weaponry start to become unethical? Because we see that now with the Geneva Convention and things like right. mustard gas and all those type of things. And I'm very interested to see how we develop over time on things like the Predator drone. And so far, they've been kind of uh, hands off and they really haven't said too much that I've seen. And uh, under President Obama, we we increased our drone attacks. And, and that's I think, is probably one of the ways of the future until we start to really challenge those things. But I am interested to see how that conversation develops because I can see a case for both, you know, being former military, I don't want to put my brothers and sisters in uniform in danger if I don't have to, but also just trying to be a compassionate person. It's like, how right is it that we're usually in some poor country and they don't have this technology we do. And so we're just able to massacre them, if you will, without even getting on their land. And I, I, again, I don't know the answer. I don't have a solid answer myself. I just think it's important that we ask these questions. Yeah, I, I do too. And it's, it is an interesting question. And, um, you know, in some ways, I'm amazed that we we actually reached some agreement on chemical weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm hopeful that we can do that kind of thing with with other weapons of war. But, you know, as you said, we've had non AI drones for, you know, what thirty years, mm-hmm. and not just the United States. I mean, every, all countries have had them, or many countries have had them, and you know, we haven't come to any real agreements other than on uh, you know some nuclear agreements. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's always a difficult discussion, and you know it comes down to you know we're we're worried that we'll turn ours off and the other guy won't. Thanks for checking out Starting Nowhere. Come find us on Facebook so you can comment on this and other clips and episodes of Starting Nowhere.